seven Latin American countries committed that by 2020 uh, they will restore 20 million hectares of land. And by restoration, we don't necessarily mean it goes back to pristine forest. It could go into productive agriculture. It could go into mixed use. But essentially taking land that is today degraded, uh, that has very little economic value and has very little ecological value, and turn it into something that is good for people and very good for the planet. Well, this is the first time that a region has got together uh, and set themselves a target. And we expect Latin America to do more. We just have seven Latin American countries. We expect that to grow. You'll remember that at the time of Ban Ki-moon's climate summit in September, uh, the goal was that 350 million hectares would, by 2030, would be restored. And this is part of two billion hectares that we at the World Resources Institute have now mapped, two billion hectares in the world, that's twice the size of China, has degraded. It used to be forests and now it has very little value ecologically and economically. And so the opportunity to restore land is one of the most wonderful opportunities that we have in the world today, not only to sequester carbon, and it could almost uh, uh, close the carbon gap on its own. But in addition to that, it provides food security, um, income, uh, greater resilience of agricultural yields and so on. We currently have uh, about 60 million hectares that are committed uh, for 2020. The goal for 2020 is that 150 million hectares would be restored. So the, the, the important thing about today is that seven nations, seven ministers got together and they said, we get it. And not only us, but our cabinets and our heads of state get it. And this is very, very important because, because if the revolution is going to take place, and it will, it will require that, it's not only a Ministry of Environment or even a Ministry of Agriculture. Actually, the Minister of Finance has to understand this, the Minister of Planning, and indeed the, the Head of State. And that's starting to happen, and it's a very, very exciting thing. We need all hands on deck. Um, uh, government ministries have to operate differently from the way they've traditionally operated. In most countries, Government ministries and departments don't like to share information with each other. They have their own flags that they want to wave and they need to learn to work differently. So too, financial institutions, the multilateral banks, the donors and the private sector need to operate differently. And even civil society, quite frankly, and research institutes need to operate differently. We need to operate in a way whereby the whole adds up to the sum of the parts because actually on a Monday morning it's very difficult to actually do the restoration. The good news though is that we now have examples really all around the world of governments that got serious about restoration demonstrating it can be done and that's terribly important that we have that demonstration. So a country like Niger as you know um, through smart policy reform um, uh, has, able to, has been able to transform rural development through bringing trees, shrubs, bushes uh, um, and carbon into the rural landscape. So the way you think about restoration is you, you have a fairly serious analysis of who are the players, who are the landowners um, uh, uh, and, and what are the financial mechanisms that exist. Are there constraints to make this happening? What is clear is that the economics of this is very, very attractive. We've done a lot of work on this and you can really show that for really any ecosystem, really in the world almost, that, that once was forest, that actually restoration to various degrees has a very, very high rate of return. It also has a high rate of return for the, for the individual, but also for the nation and the region. It, it also um, makes the land more resilient. It um, improves food security. So I think the intellectual battle has been won 
um, the political bad, you know, make, winning the political hearts and minds is still very much open. I mean, most countries still, when they think about investment and capital, they think about who can we get to come and build factories. Um, and when they think of capital, they think of physical capital, whilst actually on their doorsteps, in their backyards, are um, hundreds, sometimes millions of hectares that are degraded land, which is capital, which is going to waste. And you can restore that capital and turn it into something hugely productive.